Uh, so in the interest of time, in kind of the art attack fashion, uh, <clears throat> so in the interest of time, uh, I've decided to import everything into stencil that I'm going to need for this video, um, and then just make a couple of quick tweaks and refinements, just to kind of cut out that initial first process. Um, if you want to listen to that, you can check out my other videos and they'll explain it in depth. So there's just a couple of tweaks and refinements I need to make to each. Uh, primarily just the animations. Uh, so with our player we're going to um, make it so you have a idle animation. So your idle animation is going to be oh, Lost the ability to spell and walk, and then from there I'm just going to alter the animations by just getting rid of what I don't need. That should be okay. Uh, for the collision for my, my player, I'm going to opt for a circle rather than a a square because otherwise it'll, the edges are going to get caught on everything. So let's try, and probably 8 will do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. That'll do. It's 8, 9, 8. Get rid of the outer layer. Okay, very quickly do the enemy animation. So I'm going to call this uh, far and close. They may not might not make much sense now, but you'll understand a little bit why we called it these. And once again, for, for this collision, it's pretty much the same character except I've, I've modified it. So we can give it the same collision. Okay. Uh, so this next thing is your uh, the, the barricade for the level. Uh, so this wants to be divided up into uh, active and then inactive. So the first one is going to be essentially the idle animation. Uh, and this is going to be a looping animation, uh, so it's a non-looping animation. Uh, what we're going to do with this is make it that when you're near to the the, the, the crate, it's going to display the first frame of its animation, which is this indicator of how many coins you've got to create. Uh, and then the second frame, we're going to have uh, the uh, the actual crate being constructed. You know, an active, so you, you, know, you can't walk through it and enemies can't get to you. So for collision for those, uh, the idle animation we're going to make uh, into a sensor. And the active animation we're going to name active and it's just going to remain as it is. Maybe make the, the collision a little bit smaller, just because uh, Having it match the, the space that it's in can cause it to become a little bit uh, erratic. And one thing that might be worth doing as well is because we're wanting these crates to be fixed, make it that it, uh, with physics wise it can't be moved or cannot move. 
so next, uh, we'll get. Just, I'm just going to tweak uh, the crosshair. So I don't. I don't know if I covered this in another video, but if you want to edit something, you can click on it and then edit the actual image itself. So I'm just going to invert it, just because it. It's quite hard to see against the background of the level. Um, as I said, I've already tested this, uh, so this this is how I know that it doesn't really look that great with it being dark, just because you can't physically see, you know, the the bullet as I'm editing here or the the crosshair itself. Um, and then last but not least, we've got the door. Now the door, uh, what we're going to do with that, as you can see, I've already got like a nifty little animation set up for that. But what I'm going to want to do is make it that uh, it, it goes through a full loop for opening and closing. So I'm going to get rid of this last frame here, and then I'm just going to tell it to not loop. So what it will do is it will go through each of these frames go to the end and stop and then when it next opens it's going to go all the way back to the start and then play through the animation and then I'll create a piece of code that will say when the door is open at, at, at its widest which is here uh, create the enemy um, and then what I want to do as well is I am gonna I think yeah, I'll 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 make it a uh, I'll remove its collision. I don't think in the, the the other game that I've got a collision for it. If so, you'll I'll I'll go I'll mention it in the previous videos that I've re-added it. But I don't think I had a collision for the for the door. Now, uh, what I will uh, I'm gonna do is once I've added the code to my door, I'm gonna create the three other variants. Uh, so that'll be door down, you know, uh, door facing down, door facing up, door facing left, door facing right. Um, but I might as well just create one door to get started with and then just edit the coordinates of where it's going to create the, the door. Um, and then finally I've got my I just want to edit my tile set and make sure that the uh, the collisions are set to the right correct settings. Uh, so my wall is going to be my kind of well wall within my level. Um, one thing that I've noticed in stencil recently is they have the, the default collision be the rectangle up rather than the square. Set it to the square uh, because otherwise that causes complications like the characters getting stuck. In the level, I mean, obviously you can make it whatever you want, but just, just so you know, if you're using thirty-two by thirty-two grids, for some reason it's been set to half a rectangle, so half a square rather than a, a full square. Um, I'm going to set it to have no collisions for the floor, and I'm just going to nip into the uh, into the floor to actually just make a quick tweak. So you can edit the, the you know the tile sets now, which is very very useful. Uh, I'm just going to darken this tile just because I, I want it to look gonna... that's a bit typical but it just helps the player kind of stand out against the background so I'm just going to very quickly flesh out a level So with this, I'm just gonna create like a squarish maze, and then in between each of these doors, there's so walls. There's gonna be a door, uh, or well, a crate, base barricade, and and the door. Uh, to just get started with, I'm just gonna uh, put the doors along the top row. One, two, three. That should add enough randomness for us to get started with. Uh, I'm going to add the player in the middle. Uh, and I'm going to, for now, just 
put some basic barricades in place. Uh, I'll cover in a sec why it's sometimes useful to be able to choose between just selecting the actors and just selecting the tiles and things like that in just a second. Uh, it's quite handy some of the things you can do with it. Uh, and we don't need to spawn the enemies, we don't need to spawn the bullets, we don't need to spawn the coins because those are all going to be things created by the actual you know, any, any, you know, enemies and old players and things like that. Uh, you might notice that it's quite hard to see the crosshair like on the rest of the level. That's because we haven't actually created our layer for our blocks. Uh, sorry, for the floor. So I'm going to do that now. So I could just fill the whole level in, but just wastes on, you know, it uses up unneeded space, so I might as well just fill in what I need. Uh, so if I try and just move these, um, move my actors here, you see the uh, the little gateway things I've made. Uh, if I try and select just them, it's going to make me select all of the tiles as well. But if I select just actors. It's just going to select the crates themselves. So, so I'm just going to move these along each by about 16. So it's pretty much just aligned with that middle block there. Doesn't need to be absolutely precise for this. There we go. That'll do. For now, anyway, I can add I can add more stuff in a little bit, um, but currently th this this should be enough for us to get started with. These are all the kind of the key components of of of, of the level, uh, and anything that isn't in the level uh, will be creating in the level as as gameplay plays out. So this is it for now for this video. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to cover cover basic player movement, and I think. Uh, Getting some basic function, you know, enemies spawning out of the doors, um, and then from there we'll start digging into some of the uh, more complex stuff.